We're going to move some cattle here this morning. Nicole is just over on the other side at the other gate. She's going to stop them in. I'm going to go in here first and pick up the bucket of lick, which I can see here they've actually dunged into, which always helps the flavour. Yeah, that'll give a nice flavour to it, all right. Oh, lovely. But yeah, it's time for these girls to get moved. I want to actually spray this paddock as well. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. All right, that's use. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Yep. So one thing I always keep in the back of my quad is a fence tester. So I'm going to just test this fence here and see what it will like. Go pay a while and get a good earth Lift from the gate. There we go. Ten thousand volts. Oh yeah. If you do, don't touch that fence, Nicole. Your eyebrows will fall off. Right. So it's Monday morning. And the job in hand, and it's not a small job either, it's going to probably end up being a big job, but it's one that's very important to get done, is to fix this case. Now you can see the bonnet is already off it. I've already been inspecting it and having a look. I don't see any leaks in that tractor. I run it for about 30 minutes. It didn't get hot, but then it was only taken over. There is a little pool of coolant in yonder, in the little well that's there. But I think that's there from just overfilling it. I'm pretty much sure the head gasket's not gone on it. 99% sure it's not the head gasket. What I'm thinking is wrong is probably a combination of a few things. Um, the weather's very warm at the moment. The place where I was mowing or topping was very, very steep. And it was probably putting the tractor on a little bit of pressure. Um, another thing is I've noticed is in front of this tractor, there is an oil cooler. And if you look, I'll just get up on top of this here now and you get a proper look. This is the air cleaner going in here, the air filter there. If you look down there, I don't know if you can see it. Pretty hard, it's very dark. But the radiator is quite dirty. You'll also see a lot of old scummy, this stuff here. All over the radiator, it's all over everything. I don't know where that actually came from. None of these pipes are leaking, but perhaps there was an eye leak of some sort um, at some stage and it run down and never was cleaned up after it. But another thing I did notice is when I took the water cap off, that radiator is clogged with rust and dirt inside. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a hell of a clean down. This engine is covered in thick grease. Not grease, it's just our burnt oil and stuff is stuck to it. Every inch of it is just caked in it. So I'm going to cover all these wires, put a bag over all these wires. Try to cover up as much as I can and give it a real good degreasing. And real good cleaning. It's a little awkward to work on with the front loader on, but I'm going to leave it on because the actual adjusters in them are seized. It wouldn't be a big job to get them freed out and get the stand sitting. They could take it off. But you know something? I'll see how I get on. If I really do need to take the front loader off, I will take it off. But my intentions to do is just simply take that radiator out of it. Um, I'm going to change the water pump and I'm going to change the thermostat. The 30 year old tractor, that's the original radiator. And when I seen inside it what it was like, it was full of big clogs of rust. I'm going to just replace it all. Last night I sat down, I went on John Connolly's uh, online website. I priced all the parts and do you know something? It wasn't costing an awful lot of money. It's worth just replacing them bits and pieces. And if it's still an issue, then we look further into it. It could be the copper seals around the injectors. You just don't know, but we'll start here and see what this is like. Another thing we're going to pick up, which is vital, is that guy there. That is the heat temperature sender. A good friend of mine came up last night and took into this tractor and fixed the dash, got the dash working and um, so the dash now works. So what we ordered was a new thermostat, new radiator, new hose kit, a new water pump and a new temperature sender. 
that temperature sender is an important thing because the reason she got hot the last time is because I didn't know what temperature she was running at. It wasn't working, the dash wasn't working. Now that the dash is working, well, that's not working and it's only a little boat that pops in and pops out and then at least be able to know what kind of temperature the engine's running at. So first things first, I'm gonna get down now and give it a good degreasing. I'm not gonna bother filming that because it's only washing down the engine. It's not really that interesting. We'll pick it up when that's all done. Greased. She looks a lot better. Let's get up here and have a look down the engine. She's a lot cleaner. So first job is we're gonna take this oil cooler off the front. We're gonna take off the chute for the air cleaner and move it out of the way. We're just gonna basically open up this whole area um, so we can get the radiator kind of freed. And then finally, we're gonna drain out all the coolant that's in it um, out of the system and get the radiator ready to take out. They were eventually in at the water radiator clogged. Look at that. Completely stuffed. Well, it's tough down below. There is room up here, but still, look at it. It's just old greasy stuff. I'm not sure where that's all coming from, whether there's a leak in the actual um, oil coolant radiator. I'm not sure. It's oil that has stuck the stuff to it. You could blow that all out easily and clean it out with a bit of brake cleaner or something like that, a degreaser. But I've seen the inside of this radiator and it does not look great. So I'm just going to take it out um, and replace it with a new one. And we're going to have a quick look to make sure we haven't any leaks in this lad here, which I don't think we do because there's no oil on the bottom anywhere. Um, but yeah, that wouldn't help with cooling. So it's a good job to take that off. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is get ready to drain this out. Some water there. Uh, we're gonna open this nut here. And the same on the far side, I'm gonna take off this bottom hose. That's gonna release all the water. And um, we're gonna try and take off this bracket to clear these pipes and just lift this radiator out. So it's the following morning. And um, with the radiator out, we have the oil uh, coolers out of the way as well. We lifted one up there. We didn't have to disconnect anything. Just lifted them out of the way. Now we have a water pump exposed. We're going to take that off um, and we're going to also take off our thermostat there, which is underneath that pipe. Um, but this morning, our first delivery came. Our radiator didn't come this morning because we got a phone call um, yesterday telling us it wasn't in stock, uh, but it's in stock today and it'll be delivered to me tomorrow. So we can still be walking away. Hopefully in this box, we should have a new water pump. We should have a new thermostat. We should have a new temperature heat sensor and we should have new hoses. Um, so we'll get them all fitted on now. That leave to tomorrow that all we have to do is fit the radiator and get this baby up and running again. So there's our hoses, there's our thermostat and there's our heat sender. And here's our water pump, water pump gasket. There's a new water pump, ready to rock. So let's just get this on the tractor. Oh, bits of crud, bits of corrosion as you'd expect. It is cast iron, but all in all, that water pump I'd say was actually fine. But anyway, we'll clean it, put a fresh new one on. It's not that it's mad expensive or anything. And there's all nice and clean too, so I'm, yeah, quite happy with that. Let's take off this old gasket. Clean up this a bit of parts cleaner. First thing we're going to do is make sure that the same. 
which by looking at they are, I don't see any difference there. We're just going to open up our gasket here. Hope we get this all in the right place. There we go. Right, so that's the water pump in. Not a big job. Definitely not a big job. Anybody could put a water pump in. It's just getting at it, the bit of tearing down. So take plenty of photos when you're doing a job. That way you can always look back and make sure you put everything back in its place. That should be 100% now, um, torn nice and freely. Um, though the pump was probably 100%, but once we have the radiator out, we might as well put a new pump into it. It'd be a shame not to. 50 quid, I think, is all that cost, 50 or 60 euro. Definitely worth putting on. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this hose and we're going to put a new thermostat in there. So for those of you who don't know where our thermostat normally is in the tractor, it's usually on the upper pipe of your radiator. Um, you'll see a housing like this which will normally have two bolts on both sides. It's usually a cast iron housing and there is the thermostat in there. Now you can put it into a hot bucket of water there and test it to see is it open and closing. Um, if you want, there's loads of YouTube videos on that showing you how to do it. It's very, very straightforward. Um, I'm just gonna replace it, have a brand new one here, and it'll be a shame not to. So I'm just gonna put a brand new thermostat into it. Just get that washer. Make sure you always take your washer out. There you are. And there is your thermostat. You pull it straight up, might be a little bit sticky. There we are. That's your thermostat out. So we'll just give this a good clean up. Um, I don't have a new gasket. I'm not gonna remove that one. I'm just gonna put a new gasket seal around it and put it back into place. I just drop in our new thermostat. There it is. There it is, that's the old one out. Right, so we're making fair good progress, nothing has kind of hit us hard yet. Uh, next thing I suppose I have to do is put back on the pulley and put back on the fan.
That's it. That's that back in place. One thing I noticed straight off the bat is before I took off the other pump, I had a huge amount of play when I was moving the fan back and forth. And that was a sure indication that there was an issue with the water pump. Could have been the culprit behind everything. So yes, definitely was worthwhile replacing that. Solid as solid can be and cool as a cucumber. Well, hopefully. All right, so that's that done. Can't do any more until the radiator comes. So we're gonna tackle another job that really needs to be done. This uh, stopper cable, if you notice when I'm pushing it down, watch the way it pushes itself back up. Do you see the spring that's in it? So there's a reluctancy to stay down. And what's happening here is, if I move the mechanism down here, you see this spot here. Now watch it when I, this is for off, and that's for on. But if I put my finger there, and that's for on, now that should be for starting. If I put my finger and push that up, you'll see how much it goes up. That tractor will not start right unless that's the whole way up. It will act like a tractor that's kind of flooded because it's been starved of fuel. So that cable, I have it adjusted out as well. It's not an adjustment problem. The cable itself has a nasty kink in it here. It's all cracked open. It's just seized. So we have a brand new cable. We're gonna take it off here. We're gonna loosen it here and we're gonna put a new cable on. Right, so that should just pull up now. Oh, that's completely rotted. Look at the way it's separated here. Yeah, that cable is completely done. You can see here where the wire is exposed, rusted into place. Done. Hopefully our new one is the same. I'll just go and grab it now. Well, the good news is, it's the right length. So, let's get it fitted. There she goes. It's going out. Next thing we're going to do is put these nuts back on here, these little adjustment nuts. So we have to put the first one back on here before we start put the cable into place. Tread that back up into a spot. There's a little hole in there and you have to feed that wire through it and then you get it into this position here. And then when you tighten this nut, and um, when you're fully finished, you tighten it to whatever way you want it adjusted and um, that's it done. It's quite a simple thing. Um, it's just threading it through is the main thing, just getting it right, it's sitting in the right place, there's no kinks or no kind of restrictions on it, so it'll pull up and down easily. Right, so that's the cable fed through, just put on this wee nut here, it's just a wee lock nut to hold the kind of stopper button in place. So the way we set it up is we put it into the on position. And that should be it there, locked in place, and then we just tighten it up. There's no resistance in this anymore, it just goes up and down nice and easily. So if you look here, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. So that's an essential job fixed, and we're just going to get another 10 spanner here and go on both sides here and just give this another quick tightening. But otherwise, that's the job fixed. Right, so it's the following morning, myself and Nicole are over here, she's keeping the heifers away from me just as I do a bit of work here because we have another little problem and it's quite an expensive problem if you don't fix it in time um, we have a water leak here and the only reason I knew it was leaking is I can see a bit of water running out on the road um, no noise I can just feel a dampness in the ground or in this area I dug down a bit with my foot earlier on and I can see quite clearly a bit of water coming up it's not a big leak but it's still a leak and something we have to fix so I'm gonna grip this area out here and try to find where the pipe is and see is it light gauge or heavy gauge because I know on this bit of ground here we have a lot of half inch light gauge pipe I want to get rid of it all um, I think I've replaced most of this this is just the last section that has to be done one thing I do want to do new shed is up there I want to run a new um, three quarter inch heavy gauge pipe the whole way on the ground here to our point where it comes into our field just over there. And I want to bury it down deep because the reason is this pipe here does freeze. Now that wasn't a problem for us before we built the shed because there'd be no cattle over here in the winter time, the water would be turned off. But now that there is cattle over in the shed, it froze three times last year and I can't have that happen. So we get an excavator in and we'll sink a track, a brand new track, the whole way up, just inside this fence, nowhere near the shock. Down good and deep. And we put probably a three quarter inch um, 
heavy gauge pipe in just one piece the whole way up and that would be a mighty job for that house something that's worth doing but this late gauge pipe if it is it is notorious for busting it's pipe my father would have put in and um, way back donkeys years ago and it just needs to be all replaced but for the day we're going to fix it get the thing back running again and get this water stopped just tread carefully for a wee while to find out what the pipe is Uh, so there's our problem, that joint is loose and come apart. My biggest problem there is now, is that that pipe is the light gauge pipe. And that's a bloody nuisance because that's very very hard to join. Um, but anyway, we're going to have to fix it, we're going to have to go home and get a bit of patch pipe and put two joiners in, we can just replace this whole pipe all in one go. There's no point in trying to do anything else to it. Alright, so there we are, there's the pipe, dug out. Uh, now, next thing I have to do is open this side that's busted. Cut off this pipe there and put a patch piece in. Now the water is off, you might say the water's running. It's running because it's coming back down the hill. There's a hell of a pipes ahead of it, so it's gonna run all the time basically. It's never gonna really stop. But we can use that for our advantage to wash down this pipe. That's the problem there, if you can see a little hole, see the little pinhole there? That's where the water was coming out. So we're just tightening the last of the um, patch pipe connections now. Heavy gauge is so much easier to work with than light gauge, because light gauge you're using different things altogether. I always keep a nice box of spare parts and all this for fittings because, trust me, when a pipe will burst, it'll be on a Sunday or it'll be on a weekday after six o'clock whenever it's closed. And that's always when it bursts. So these two polys here is what you would use on half inch uh, lake gauge. So you put your nut on first. This goes onto the pipe then, on top of the pipe. Try to get it up here to the flush end and then this fits into that. You wrap it with plumber's tape and you tighten it up. But you have to be really careful that you tighten it straight. That you don't, the pipe doesn't bend to one side because if it does that, you'll get a leak. That's the difference. Um, with heavy gauge, all you need is one of these rings up into the pipe and tighten your pipe up into it. Some people do use these little fillers, which is basically the, the equivalent of these here. You can get them in different shapes and sizes that you can put up into the heavy gauge to stop it from kind of shrinking when you're tightening it, but I've never found one ever leak. Um, they're just so much easier. So, so much easier to fix um, than these because these are now they're temperamental, very temperamental. But anyway, we have it more or less sorted. I'm hoping we turn it on, there's no leaks, so we can move on to the next job because we've quite a few of them today. And the heat isn't helping because it is so, so warm. Another thing you have to be really careful of, you don't over tighten. Right, Nicole's out to turn it back on. Nice puddle of water underneath it. One thing, it'll be very easy to see now is it's leaking because you'll see a drip on that water. And we see no drips. That's what we want to see. I'm just going to go over here to this first drinker. It's on the other side of it. Just to push down the valve and make sure there's no air locks in the system that's stopping the water from getting there. I'm going to let that air out first. There we have it. That's the air gone. There was a little air in the system. So hopefully we still know more leaks and we can cover this back in. Yeah, we're fine. Trust me, it is baking warm what we're doing at the minute. It's not that the sun's out or anything, it's just raw heat. There's not an air kind. Makes it very uncomfortable to work. But it's job fixed. We're gonna cover it over now because we leave it. These girls here behind me will not be long digging it back up again and pulling it apart. So we're gonna cover it over, put a few sods sitting on top of it. I'm gonna go up and address the problem now we have with one of our calves. We've got an issue with one of our calves that's out here. Um, about a week ago, when it was over, I noticed that one of our calves was scouring. It had stopped thriving compared to the rest of them, um, slightly, um, and it was a bit empty of itself than what it should have been. The rest of the calves are thriving, doing really, really well. But this one calf just stuck out to me. So it has a nasty scour. Got a powder for it to dry that scour up and we got an antibiotic as well just to treat it. We've done that for two days. Calf seemed to be fine. Seemed to have dried up, not fully, but most of the way. Um, but I noticed then the day was over. That's probably three days now since we've treated that calf. And I noticed today when we're over the calf scouring again. 
So it's back to square one. What we're going to do now is we're going to put her in and I've got a little sample bottle here in my pocket and we're going to take a sample of it. We're going to send it off to the lab, get it tested to see what we are dealing with because it is only one calf in the batch that has it. It's not worms, it's nothing to do with that. Um, it's probably down to a weed, I'd say maybe even a ragweed or something that is at, although there's no real ragweeds around here that I can see of. What we need to get to the bottom of it is if it is bacteria in his stomach or something like that, we need to find out what one it is so we can treat that one specifically. So uh, specifically, that's a word that Tom Pemberton likes. Did they say that right? Specifically, specifically. Specifically. Yeah, I think it's just. What way we walk this? Successes, successes. I don't know, we let them all come out in the cold, maybe they'll follow us. Just stand over here. I haven't got the fence with us this time. To get the cars out, we normally would have a reel, a white tape reel with us. We tie it to the one side of the gate. We'd open it out and then we'd close it in bit by bit on the calf. The calf just runs out, walks the treat. But today, Nicole forgot it. Isn't that right, Nicole? Yeah, you forgot it, it's your fault. And we don't have that today, so we have to try to coax them out by fooling them. But it has been out a good few times. And it seems to be getting easier each time, so hopefully. There it's there, if my finger walks right, just behind the other side of that post. Now, she's in this bunch. We didn't put them all in. We didn't have to. We just let some of these run out, out of the way. Not you, there she's there. Oh, you stay there. She's off the just dung in there now. So we missed our first chance. We're going to have to tell her a couple of tight ghost stories or something like that to get her to do something. So Nicole reckons I need to scare the calf to get it to, you know what. Um, probably would work. What works for you? Halloween music? No. Nicole doesn't like uh, Michael Myers and Halloween music and it's one of my favourite films. So uh, every time bedtime comes and they won't leave the kitchen, I just stick on an old uh, bit of Michael Myers team music and always does the tricks, isn't that right? We'll get it done. We'll pick this up when we have this full, probably in about two or three hours. Right, so we got our sample after about 30 minutes or more. We waited and waited and nothing was happening. Eventually we got about a teaspoon, which hopefully is enough. But I said to Nicole, as soon as you let them out, you watch. She'll plaster the place. Yeah, she'll plaster the place. They can go out now, back with the crew, and hopefully we'll get to the bottom of whatever it is. <laughs> Pardon the punt, we'll get to the bottom of whatever it is causing it. Oh, look at her over there, going in the gate, dunging away. That's the girl. I'm going home now, we're going to put the rest of this case together because the radiator is just after landing. I'm not going to include in today's video, I'll include in Wednesday's video. I didn't want to make a whole video on fixing the case because there's an awful lot more work actually happening on the farm than it. But we will be getting it going today. There's very little left to be done on it. The radiator will only take half an hour, 45 minutes to complete. And hopefully, fingers crossed, all will go well on it. Just before we do go, we mentioned a cow um, that wasn't well in the last video. She's still the same. She's milking fairly well. She's eating all the male around her. It's a weird one. The vet thinks it could be our heart. But one thing we did put into her was a magnetic uh, capsule. So basically, if she has had any steel or anything like that, um, it's going into her stomach, which can happen. Never happened to us because our fields, they're relatively clean and normally that kind of stuff gets into them when they're eating silage. But when you put that magnet into her stomach, it draws the steel to it. Sorry about that fly. Gone. It'll cling to that metal and hopefully fix that problem. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but I don't think that's the problem. We just don't know. She's had a lot of treatment for different things now and she's still the same. She's no worse off, but I'm worried about her now because she's a long time like that. She hasn't lost any more weight, which is good, but she's just not right. Um, and I just don't know what it is. I'm going to have to try to take other steps to try to find out what is going on. If we have to send a blood sample off or something like that, we'll get that done. It's just one of those things. It hasn't happened to us in a long time. This week has been troublesome with the case overheating. That doesn't really worry me, but you have water leaks. We have a bit of an outbreak of mastitis at home, which is the biggest worry of the whole lot for me. For a herd that relatively is mastitis free, it's alarming to me. So that's a nuisance, nuisance in the power now. But we're treating that at the minute. It is working, it is clearing up. It's just, we have to hold the milk now and throw milk out and it just leaves things a little bit more awkward. But it's just been a week of that, that's what happens. Sickness in cows, sickness in cows, water bush, tractors breaking down. That's farming, that's what it is all about. As I said before, I only said a couple of weeks ago that things have been great for us in the last year. But I said that can change just in one day and that's exactly what has happened. It's not that bad. The mastitis is the biggest problem. I'm not worried about the tractor. I'm not worried about little things like that there. They'll all be sorted. The mastitis will be sorted, but it's, it's a nuisance. Dairy farmers know you don't want it. Don't want to see it at all. Throwing an awful lot of milk out. 
because of that but anyway what you do that's farming the ups the downs the usual kind of crack me and nicole's gonna go home here get a cup of coffee we're gonna take into this case and hopefully get it all sorted out and get it fixed folks gonna leave for now thanks very much for watching as always if you haven't subbed now's your time to do it give us a like leave a comment down below and until the next one talk to you again